Please stand for opening prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've done for us. Dear Lord, I thank you for everything that you've done for us, helping us get this far as graduates, Lord, and help us have to uh, have a successful night, and hopefully everything goes well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading for tonight comes from 1 Peter 1, verse 7. And it says, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world.
Greetings, good evening. On behalf of Miami Union Adventist Academy, on behalf of our principal, Mr. Edwin Sillier, and our teachers and staff, we would like to welcome you to the consecration of the class of 2022 from Miami Union Adventist Academy. Thank you. We also welcome those online that are watching for anyone who would like to watch the streaming, you can find that on the Miami Bethany YouTube, Facebook, and church website. Thank you. President Owusu, Superintendent Fletcher, Chairman of the Board English, Principal Sillier, faculty and staff, and family and friends of the graduating class of 2022, welcome. My name is Sylvania Sims, and I am the class secretary of the class of 2022. I am so excited to bring you greetings as we are here gathered today to celebrate the 11 students graduating from Miami Union Adventist Academy. It is with a great honor that we stand here today, prepared to journey onto the next stage of our lives. I hope that this weekend inspires those that come after us to be ambitious and courageous. Through all the nights we stayed up to study, homework and classwork completed, tests, being sick, early mornings we woke up, practices, etc., we overcame. But most importantly, with God. God is the foundation of Miami Union Adventist Academy and with him, we can do all things because he strengthens us. Thank you and enjoy your evening. Good evening, everyone. Wow, my voice is really projecting here. All right, all right. Good evening, happy Sabbath. Uh, friends, family, MUA staff, uh, pastor, senior pastor of the church. And last but not least, the graduating class of 2022 of Miami Union Academy. Congratulations. My name is uh, PJ English, and I have sat right in where those seats wore those same captain gowns that you did a long time ago. I graduated from Miami Union Academy in 2000, and I went to Oakwood College back then. Anybody going to Oakwood? Anybody going to Oakwood? One, two, okay. Don't, come on, you gotta raise your hand high, be proud. Okay, all right, all right. So I know Miami Union Academy has uh, instilled so many values uh, and traditions in your lives during your time at Miami Union. So now the time for you guys to go out and really share those uh, values and everything that Miami Union Academy has taught you. No matter what school you go to, whether it's Oakwood, FIU, Miami Dade, Clark University, no matter what college it is, just make sure you share those Christian values that all these teachers and the faculty and staff that has taught you over this time, okay? I know that there have been so many people that I can call their name, like it's a Regina Harris who goes to this church, uh, Shelly Garner who goes to this church who taught me when I was there, 
uh, Ms. Renee Hodge, who was my second grade teacher. Also, when I got to high school, she was my choir director. Uh, right now, she, you know, and she was also a former principal of Miami Academy as well for a small, for a short time. <clears throat> and now she's a principal in her home's, home island, the Virgin Islands right now. So it's those relationships, don't underestimate the relationships that you're going to make with your classmates and your teachers. Because those three people that I call right now who taught me second grade, I could pick up a phone right now and call them for something. If I need something, I know they can do it, they're going to give it to me. So I'm here talking on behalf of the Alumni Association, okay? COVID-19 has really impacted the association just like everyone else. But this year, we are back. This year, we are back. And guess what? I am asking you guys, anybody going to be local? Anybody going to stay staying around? No? Everybody leaving? Local? OK. I'm not asking nothing of you. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. But this year, we are back. It's usually on Labor Day weekend, but we're going to plan something big. I'm not sure when it's going to be this year, but we are in the, in the works of making something happen this year. And guess what? We need your help to plan. We need your fresh ideas, because my old ideas is not going to work in 2022, all right? So we need your new ideas and everything uh, for the Alumni Association. Um, so I talked about the people who have impacted my life at Miami Union Academy. Uh, we've had so many successful students, actually, that have sat in your seats as well. We have doctors, lawyers, uh, firemen, entrepreneurs, pastors. And I think the pastor who's preaching today is a graduate of Miami Union Academy. You'll hear more from him later on, okay? So before I go, uh, I wanna say welcome to the Alumni Association, firstly. And I wanna share with you two short videos. They're short, they're two minutes each, I promise. And these are former students of Miami Union Academy, and they're gonna share with you a little bit of their experience and those that have impacted their life at Miami Union. All right, again, congratulations, guys. Cooper. Uh, most people know me as Danny, uh, Donnie, uh, whichever you choose. Uh, years at uh, Union were 97 to 2001. Um, Christian education uh, is very important to me. I like it. You know, it's, it's, as a matter of fact, I love it. Uh, I've known it all my life um, from growing up in Jamaica where went to Christian education uh, school down there in uh, St. Catherine, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Came here uh, two years out of that. I was in public school. Um, didn't quite like that as well, but didn't work out too well. And then I went to Union in 97. Um, I like the, the base of the Christian education where you have uh, something where you have a foundation as to which you can um, relate back to as far as what you're reinforcing at home, um, at church, and then you have it at school. Um, very important to me, and I, and I think it's Every, everyone should experience uh, Christian education um, at least some point in their life. I have uh, three kids. Um, oldest is uh, 17. Uh, she currently does not go to a Christian education. She did uh, up until um, high school, and then we transferred over to uh, somewhere closer. My two younger kids, they uh, go to Sawgrass. Um, they are very very well into the uh, school activities and what the school offers and uh, they're they're loving it they're loving it because uh, I want to give them a taste of um, what I have experienced and what I've learned um, through Christian education you definitely have to um, remember um, Miss Joseph she was very very instrumental in um, my education and, and even my, my personal life um, also Miss Hodge very um, lovable, um, definitely it took me under her wings and you know, some, some good counsel. I remember some good counsel that she gave. Um, also, Mr. Archer. Mr. Archer was, uh, was, was, was one of the, the, the rocks in my corner as well. And Ms. Gardner. Um, and just, that's just to name a few. Um, I'm, still, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, this, this old English thing, to be honest with you, the English language. Um, she did her best uh, that she, she knew how to, to do for me, but that the, other, the other rest falls on me, so. One of the closest um, relationships that I've, that I've formed 
uh, coming out of Union, um, was definitely with, uh, with Wesley, uh, with Wesley Sterling. Um, you know, I guess, I, <laughs> I guess going to Union and being, um, fresh, uh, off the boat, if you will. Uh, Wesley, uh, you know, he, he kind of, I don't know if he felt sorry for me or took to me. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> he looked out for me. And uh, up to this day, man, I can call that guy anytime, um, any any day, and you know, he'll, 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 he'll still, um, you know, answer the phone and we'll, we'll, we'll chat it up and we'll talk for hours, you know, hours and not even know we've been talking that long. The impact that MUA has, uh, had on my life is, is definitely, that's essentially the, the foundation um, as to where I am today. Um, you know, going through different things in my life and um, different career choices that I've made, uh, I made them based on the things that we used to have at Union, you know, career day when um, parents used to come by and uh, tell us what they, what they, what they do. Um, you know, uh, I remember, um, Bobby Flintroy coming by and telling us about uh, being a firefighter, and that was the the spark that um, led to my interest there. So definitely some foundations that were formed there at the school, and it was just it was just you know as far as friendships and relationships and career choices and you know the, the, that's union was the foundation for all of that, for all of that you know to develop into um, where I am today in my life. So. Really, really appreciative of that. Advice to any alumni, um, and, and, I, and I'm speaking to, my, to myself as well when I, when I say this, um, I, I myself, uh, you know, I, I need to do better in um, reaching back and, you know, giving back to, to the school of which it, where it all started from. And um, not just um, during the alumni weekend or something like that. I need to do better um, year round. We, we need to do better year round in giving back uh, to the students so that uh, their experience could be, if not uh, like ours, better than our experience um, coming through Miami Union. So that would be the advice I would give to the alumni that are out there and are looking at this. Let's, let's, let's do better um, and we can, make, we can make a great experience for, for someone else and might change your life forever. Hi, my name is Jason Brown. I attended Miami Union Academy from 9th until 12th grade and graduated in 1999. Uh, my mother is a firm believer in Christian education. She herself uh, attended Christian schools and wanted the same for, for me. I attended uh, Fort Lauderdale District School, now known as Mount Olivet Junior Academy, and after 8th grade, I moved, in to, moved on to Miami Union Academy. One of the influential persons in my, in my life while at Miami Union, I would have to say is Miss Joseph. Though she was stern, she was also fair. She really pushed us to take charge of our, uh, daily, our daily routines, to hold, uh, help, hold ourselves accountable for the things that we do. Um, she was tough, don't get me wrong, but she was also a blessing, not only to me, but I believe to many students, not as, as, as well as the other teachers there. But for me, a, the, an influential teacher that I can say was, who really played a big part while uh, at my time at Miami Union Academy, had to be Miss Joseph. Everyone at that school played a, a part in my life. Even now when I am writing certain things, I have to remember my, the, the grammatical errors and all these different punctuations that Miss Garner drilled into us and made sure that we knew. Uh, Miss Joseph, history and just knowing about just the just social uh, social and political affairs. Uh, Miss Brise with her instructional math and religion. I, I still remember, uh, I believe it was either Mr. Archer taking us through the steps of the sanctuary and us having to build the sanctuary. If it wasn't Mr. Archer, it was Mr. Davis. Um, just those, you know, those few people, but everyone at Miami Union Every teacher that I had played a part in my life. Long-lasting friendships. Let's just say that when you attend Miami Academy, you become, it's not just 
you see this person and you never see them again. So a few of my classmates, we transitioned from Fort Lauderdale District School onto uh, Miami Indian Academy, I can say. We had Jarvis Jones, Chris McNish, Rodney Faison, um, Alton Staple, uh, and we all, we all went over to Miami Union Academy. But from then on, I've, I've made, I mean, my friends that I have from ninth grade until 12th grade, I can pick up my phone right now and, and, and call any one of those, um, any one of those classmates I've made. I mean, you can talk about AJ, Wes, uh, George Florimon, Pastor George Florimon, who's also a good friend of mine, he actually did the blessing for my son and we were classmates and graduated in 1999. All of these, these, these people, uh, Swan, Sarah, I can, name, I can name a majority of my classmates that, and Brian, Brian Smith, all these people I have in my phone and we, are, we, are, we still remain pretty close now. We also have a, a group chat, Karis, with Kar Karis Valentine. Uh, most of my classmates I still talk to even now. Daily routine, hanging out in the courtyard at the old Okeechobee, school just having fun i mean just just interacting with the with those classmates and those from other classes um higher and, and higher than us and younger than us just having fun uh you know you take for granted those times now that you're older and you have to pay bills and you have your own families uh there are times i look back and remember the days when rashida myself uh kita wes all of us would just gather and just make fun and just have a good time, you know, but not also forgetting the valuable lessons that we were taught while that's in class. The advice that I give the parents today is uh, Christian education is well worth your money. It's well worth your investment in your child. The, the, the lessons that they will learn, the practical and spiritual lessons that they, that they learn are things that they'll never forget. These are tools that even if you feel that they're straying away from God's word, will still stay true, will still stand firm in their heart. I can tell you for myself, there are times when I was just not in the frame of mind where I wanted to just even acknowledge God at times. But I can tell you, those times, are, those are the times when those lessons and those prayers, those worship services, those, uh, those times of when we when we would have uh, traumatic experiences or or just certain events happening to different classmates, those are the things. Those fundamental practices and fundamental lessons that we've learned. Those those are the um, the lessons that your child will never forget. Though they may stray from stray from the church or they may even stray from just God in general. They will always remember those those prayers, not only that you did at home, or those 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 worship that those worship uh, times you did at home, but the worship experiences that they had at Miami Union Academy, those uh, circle of prayers that we used to do. Uh, those are the things that I still remember now, even on my down times when I feel as though, Lord, where are you? What are you doing? Those simple things still come to mind and they still play a big impact in my life today. Good evening. Pastor Leonard Newton III is a product of Christian education. He is a proud graduate of Miami Union Academy. He felt the call of God to enroll at Oakwood University where he obtained a Bachelor's of Arts degree in theology. He also attended Walden University where he earned a Master's of Science degree in psychology. He has been blessed to minister in the Southeastern Conference where he has pastored the Ebenezer SDA Church in Bartow, Florida, the All Nations SDA Church in Winter Haven, Florida, the Alfe Agape in Lebanon SDA Churches in Miami, Florida, 
the Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tallahassee, Florida, the Mount Olivet Seventh-day Adventist Church in Quincy, Florida, and presently pastors the Daughter of Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church in Delray, Florida. Throughout his ministry, Pastor Newton has conducted several evangelistic crusades that have led many souls to Christ. He was able to successfully build a church for one of his congregation and has renovated churches and paid off mortgages. He was instrumental in starting a seven-day Adventist school in Tallahassee, Florida. He is married to the love of his life and best friend, Shelly M. They are blessed with two beautiful daughters, Sana, 16 years old, Lauren, 10 years old, and a son, LJ, seven years old. Pastor Newton's main goal in life is to follow God's will wherever it leads. After special music, the next words you will hear are from Pastor Newton. Please tune in to hear the word of God flow through him. Thank you. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow streets, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding. There were stripes upon his back, and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head, and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death. Down the Por su amor, por ti. 
Why don't you give them another hearty amen? amen. To the graduating class of 2022, to the principal, faculty, and staff, parents, uh, it truly is a blessing and an honor to be with you this evening. Uh, I am a product of Christian education, a uh, graduate of the class of 96 from Miami Union Academy. And it was my mother, actually the guidance counselor of MUA, Marlene Newton, who sacrificed to make sure that I could have a Christian education. She worked two jobs just so that my brother and I uh, can learn of the Lord. And this, of course, you will never forget it, graduating class of 2022, you are blessed, and you should never forget this weekend, because of course this signifies something that God has done for you. In fact, what statistics tell us that every year uh, that African Americans, a number of African Americans, they do not graduate from high school, uh, but the mere fact that you've made it to this point in your life is a milestone. And this weekend, you are closing one chapter of your life, and you're opening up a new chapter. And my only question to you tonight is what's next? What's the next mountain that you are going to climb? What's the next achievement that you're going to set before you? Because God wants to do something special in your life. And, and I'm not going to hold you long tonight. I'm not going to hold you long tonight. But I would suggest to you that there are three things that you have to remember, three things that you have to remember to be able to achieve what God has for you. And before I get into our message for tonight, I'm just going to say a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. Let your name be honored and glorified. This we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And so like I stated, there are three things that you have to remember. Three things that you have to remember to be successful and to have what God has for you. Number one, you have to focus. You have to focus. True story is actually told in 1995, the Chicago Tribune records that a 38-year-old man on his way to work decided to cut across eight lanes of ongoing traffic, four northbound and four southbound. 
and see this man now as he meticulously crosses the first four lanes of ongoing traffic. And now as he begins to climb over the medium in the middle of this highway, a strong Chicago wind blows the hat off of his head. And without thinking, instinctively, this man runs back into the ongoing lanes of traffic that he just crossed. He stoops down to pick up his hat. And tragically, he's hit by a truck and he dies instantly. Uh, tragic as this story may be, there is a valuable lesson that every one of us can learn tonight is that you can lose everything for simply chasing after nothing. And the question is today, what are you going to chase after? Uh, there are many individuals right now who are working dead-end jobs because instead of focusing on what God had called them to focus in on, they decided to chart their own course. And they did not focus in on the purpose that God had designed them for. And now there is no happiness. There is no peace. There is no true success in their life because they've decided to focus on something that is not even the purpose of their life. See, see what's interesting is that if you ever want to know the purpose of an invention, you have to go to its designer, its creator. And if you want to know the purpose of your life, you have to go to God because God created you. The sad reality when it comes to many individuals today is that because they have lost their focus, because they did not allow God to tell them what their purpose is, they're living the rest of their life being a square peg trying to fit in a round hole. And, 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 and you have to understand that an eagle will never be happy swimming in the ocean because that's not what an eagle was designed to do. And you have to find your purpose, your mission, your calling for you to be happy. And the only way you, well, how you can find your purpose is by focusing on God. But then there's a second thing, and I'm not going to hold you long tonight, how you can be successful. Number one, you have to focus. But then number two, and this is very key and essential, you have to be willing to fight. You have to be willing to fight. Now, now bear with me. I, I'm not saying that you have to put on a boxing gloves. I, I'm not saying that you have to get in an octagon or bear arms. But what I'm trying to say to you is that being that you are called by God, you're blessed by God, the enemy is not happy. And he's going to put whatever obstacles, whatever uh, pitfalls he can put in your way to stop you from attaining your goal. And so you have to be willing to fight to have what God has for you. This is very important. And, and see, uh, you have to understand that after this weekend, uh, you are an adult. Nothing is going to be handed to you. No one ever stumbles onto success. No one ever is given greatness. But you have to work to be great. You have to work to be successful. You have to fight through the obstacles in your life. And see, even if you have your focus, even if you know your purpose, even if you plan out every uh, uh, avenue of your life, the devil is going to come his way to try to distract you. And, I, and if I can, bear with me. I, I, I like what Mike Tyson, the former heavyweight champion of the world, says, is that everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. And the question is today, what are you going to do when life hits you in the mouth? What are you going to do? And see, I like what psychologists say because what psychologists tell us is that there are three responses uh, that, that people have when they're faced with adversity. They either freeze, there's flight, or there's fight. And, and, and sometimes what people do when life hits them in the mouth uh, they freeze. They, they don't do anything with their life because they're tired of the adversity and the problems and the trials in their life. They stay on the same level that they're on and they never achieve greatness. But then there's some individuals that when life punches them in the mouth, they run. They run from what God has for them. But then there is the people who are willing to fight for what God has for them. And, and this is a biblical point. 
This is a biblical point because when you look at Scripture and you look at the children of Israel, God promised them the Canaan land. He told them that there would be a place flowing with milk and honey just for them, uh, that this would be a place that they could be successful and they could multiply and they could be fruitful. But for them to have that land, they had to fight. They had to fight the Amalekites. They had to fight the Philistines. They had to fight giants just to have what God had for them. And you have to be willing to fight. Again, bear with me, but, but this is so poetic. I, I love what Mike Tyson also says. He says what life is, life is about managing your losses. Because in life, you're going to lose. The older you get, eventually you're going to lose your beauty and your looks. The older that you get, your loved ones are going to fall into the sleep of death and leave you. Life is about losses, but life is about managing those losses. You have to fight for what God has promised to you. And, and graduating class of 2022, you have to be willing to fight to have what God has for you. There are going to be people who are going to question you. There are going to be people who are going to doubt your purpose and your mission. There are going to be uh, uh, things that are going to happen that are going to drive you to your knees and, and, and cause you to want to run or to freeze, but you have to be willing to fight. But then finally, number three, and this is the last point, for you to be successful and for you to have what God has for you, you have to follow. You have to focus. You have to fight. And finally, you have to follow. True story is told of a man by the name of Dan Berlin. Dan Berlin is a man who's roughly 55 years old. And what's interesting about Dan Berlin is that he has participated and has run in several marathons. And in fact, he has run in six Boston marathons. It's a marathon. Uh, where he ran 26 miles. Six times he did this. But what's remarkable about Dan Berlin is not that he had the endurance at the age that he was to run these marathons, but what's amazing about the feat that Dan Berlin was able to accomplish is that Dan Berlin is blind. He cannot see. And the question is, how can a blind man run 26 miles? And it's very easy, it's very simple, and this is a true story, you can research this for yourself, but Dan Berlin would not run alone, but he would run with the, his friend. And his friend was much more skilled of a runner than he was. And because Dan Berlin could not see what Dan Berlin did, uh, his friend would have a rope tied to him, and Dan Berlin would hold on to this rope. And so any time his friend began to go right, he went right. Any time his friend went left, he went left. Any time his friend sped up, he sped up. Any time his friend slowed down, he slowed down. Why? Because he did not know how to get to the finish line. But the good thing is he had a friend who knew how to get there. And all he had to do was follow his friend, and he would get to the finish line. Graduating class of 2022, you may not know necessarily what your focus is, what your purpose is in life, but God knows. You may not know how to get to your goal, but God knows how to get there. But you have to hold on to him. You have to follow him, and you can't look at the things in this world, and you have to trust him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Sad reality today, there are many people sitting in a prison cell because they followed after the things of this world instead of following after God. There are many people who are in loveless marriages because instead of following God on choosing who your mate should be. You fo they followed after their own desires. There are many people today who are not happy, who have no peace. There is no success in their life because they did not follow God. 
And my plea to you, graduating class of 2022, that you focus, that you fight, that you follow. You focus, you fight, and you follow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this graduating class. There's so much promise in them. And Lord, we're asking, we're begging, we're pleading that these individuals can reach their potential. Help them to focus. Help them to fight. Help them to follow after you because you would lead them down the path that they need to go. Save them in your kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. I want to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Leonard Newton on behalf of my class and administration who are captivated by your message for us tonight. It was a great pleasure to listen to you talk about how important it is to remember to stay focused or we'll end up being lost, that we have to be willing to fight for what God has promised for us because regardless of the hindrances, everything we need in our lives has to be worked for. We also now know how important it is that we follow God and hang on to him. Thank you for shedding light on these three things in order we need in order to be successful and to not do what we want, but what God has planned for us, the true purposes of our lives. My class and I deeply appreciate your time spent with us this evening and promise to take what we learned tonight and apply it to our lives as best as we can. Could we give Pastor Newton one more round of applause, please? Thank you once again. We are going to have a prayer of consecration uh, for our seniors. We're going to ask that they will stand as we cover them in prayer at this time. Let us bow our heads. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Ghost, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you cover these seniors in a very special way. Lord God, we, 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 we consecrate them tonight. We ask that you put a force field around them to protect them as they go in and as they go out. Lord, we ask that you help them as they look behind themselves. They have all of their memories, Lord, as they look before them. They have all of their dreams. As they look around them, they see all the folks that love them. And then, Lord, help them to look within because there is a seed of greatness that you have deposited in each of them. So, Lord, bless them. Bless them in a mighty way. Show them your favor. And tonight, we consecrate them to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. We pray. Let everyone say amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. Pastor Newton, I'm going to ask you to come on up. <laughs> Pastor Newton, on behalf of Miami Union Adventist Academy, the administration, the teachers and staff, the graduating class, we would like to thank you for your words of encouragement and your words of wisdom to our graduates. Here's a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
As we get ready to conclude this evening, I would like to remind all of us of a few announcements for the event taking place tomorrow. To facilitate the enjoyment of the weekend for everyone, the administration, faculty and staff of Miami Union Adventist Academy and Barry University is requesting that our guests respect the following guidelines. Please remember tomorrow's events are ticketed due to COVID restrictions. Please remember to be seated during all events and remain out of the aisle. Remember to put your phone on silent before entering in and remember to allow the recession of the graduating class of 2022 along with the program participants to leave the auditorium before you enter in. Please remember that Barry University has a strict guideline on mass usage inside the auditorium. Mass will be maintained on in the, inside the auditorium. You are encouraged to use hand sanitizers and wash your hand as much as possible. Thank you. Can the congregation please stand up for a closing prayer? Our Father in, in ours heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, thank you for helping us come here safely with no harm or danger, Lord. Help those who couldn't make it today and bless the class of 2022 who are graduating tomorrow. Help us on our journey and just not pray, amen. You may be seated.